Welcome to this episode of Fleet Friday. This week we will be looking at one of Cornwall Fire and Rescue's rescue tenders, or RTs for short. These are based at Tolvadden and Bodmin Community Fire Stations. The vehicles are based on 2010 Mercedes Atigo chassis. They have a gross vehicle weight of 13 tonnes and they are powered by a straight six diesel engine producing 290 brake horsepower. The bodywork on the vehicle was conducted by John Dennis Coach Builders as well as ourselves in engineering workshops. The rescue tenders carry a range of cutting equipment for use at road traffic collisions um, and so as such it is mobilised by critical control to um, road, uh, road accidents or RTCs uh, that they deem necessary for this vehicle to attend. Because of its enhanced uh, crash rescue capabilities, uh, it's got more tools um, capable of, of dealing with um, larger vehicles, lorries uh, and tractors and the likes that we see on the Cornish roads. So starting off in the cab of the vehicle, I'm sat in the obviously in the driver's uh, seat here. Uh, it's a very standard cab on this on this vehicle. But moving on, to the left we have a battery master switch so this isolates all the electrical power to the vehicle when it's not being used uh, to stop the batteries from from going flat and a cancel all button we'll explain a bit more about that in a moment moving on across to the officer in charge's position we can see the mobile data terminal or mdt the tom tom for where fire control send uh, orders to the vehicle for for the, the contain directions to the to the incident in question. Above the officer in charge's seat, we can see siren controls, as well as the main scheme radio. So now moving across to above the driver's position, we can see the uh, the blue light control panel. If you've watched our video on the uh, aerial ladder platform, this control panel will look very familiar to you. But starting on the right, we have a 999 button. So this puts on all of the blue uh, lights as well as the siren for when responding to an incident. The AAS or attendance at scene button. So this uh, turns the siren off as well as some of the blue lighting uh, on the grill, but still um, has the roof bar illuminated as well as the rear and side blues. Uh, the ability to turn off the flashing headlights if need be, locker lights for the vehicle, crew cab lighting and a reversing horn cutout. Above that we can see some LEDs. This let the, this, these let the driver know that the uh, vehicle is not safe to be driven on the road because one of the parameters hasn't been met. So in this case uh, the crew cab seat belts are not being worn obviously because there's no one in the back at the moment. Uh, but we have a mast raised LED, a door open LED, locker up LED and rear step uh, deployed uh, LED. The council all button that I showed you uh, a moment ago is um, used to turn off. It's one press and it, it turns off any lighting that may be on at that at that time. It's just for ease for the driver. So now moving into the crew cab of the appliance, we've got stowage for high vis jerkins. And along the bulkhead here, we have four handheld torches, three radios for fire ground or incident ground communications, two airbag protect uh, protectors for making the airbag safe on a vehicle before the firefighters or other agencies work on, on, on a potential casualty sat in the driver's seat. And then over here we have a, a resuscitator and oxygen therapy kit for um, administering oxygen or resuscitation to a casualty. Nitrile gloves and in that box is some uh, masks with for the current uh, COVID uh, climate. And two small tool kits that the firefighters can grab as they're leaving the vehicle that contain small tools, trim removal tools uh, and the likes. So because this is a, not a conventional pumping appliance, it doesn't carry breathing apparatus. So the crew cab looks a little different to a, a normal pumping appliance. By having these flat back chairs, 
we can also have stowage behind them uh, to stow items that the, are needed at, uh, in particular RTCs. So starting off with the far right unit, we can see two foam fire extinguishers. In the next unit along, we can see th uh, three packs of cervical extrication collars or neck, neck collars they, as they're also known and uh, two sets of electrical gloves. Above that also uh, the first aid kit is carried. In the next unit along we have two, even though these, as I said before, this vehicle doesn't carry breathing apparatus, these are breathing apparatus cylinders, but the white jackets on them denote that they're not to be used for breathing apparatus. These are purely for uh, use on air tools and the like. You'll see a little bit more of that as we get into the lockers. Then in the last unit, we have all of the battery chargers for all of the cordless tools that are kept on the on, on the vehicle. So when this is in the station, it's plugged into a shoreline that provides 240 volts throughout the vehicle. So these um, are charged when the vehicle is obviously plugged in so that they're ready to go when needed. So underneath the crew cab seat, we have additional uh, stowage space. So we've got spare stowage for six life jackets and four Peli uh, scene lighting um, units. So these can be deployed um, at, at night time in conjunction with the mast on the vehicle for uh, scene lighting. At an so before we take you on a tour of the vehicle, it's uh, easier to show you now the differences in the tools that are carried. As this is a rescue tender and it goes to more of the serious road traffic collisions, it carries a wider selection of tools than what our standard pumping appliances do. So starting off with the cutter, this is what we call a dedicated cutter. This means that it, it can only cut. So as you can see here, we have the blades. All of these tools, no matter if it's a ram, a spreader, a cutter, all work on 720 bar of hydraulic pressure. So as you can see here, we've got the two blades with a flat surface for, for cutting. This is what we call a new technology cutter. Moving on, we've got a dedicated spreader. Again, this is called a dedicated spreader because it can't be used for um, cutting. I'll explain, you, you'll understand what I mean about that in a second. But it can be used for spreading and, and pinching. So as you can see here, the, the, the jaws are currently closed, but they, they can expand out to spread items away from each other or pinch together to crush items, um, say a, a car wing, for example. Moving on, this is now what we call a combi tool. So whereas I referred to the other ones as dedicated spreaders and dedicated cutters, this is a combi tool. So it can actually cut and spread. So as you can see here on the side of the blades, we've got these serrations so this can be used for for gripping onto metal metal when spreading and the teeth here um so uh, that's obviously the cutting surface so we've got a combi tool dedicated spreader dedicated cutter and now onto the ram a telescopic ram so on this model here the the ram will extend out of this uh, end of the uh, end of the unit um, and obviously the control handle there. So starting off with the offside front locker of the uh, of the appliance, we have got a toolkit carried in the blue carry case, three lots of socket sets in the red cases behind, MoFlash scene safety lamps, and three ton strops and shackles. In the first pullout tray above, we have a turf ore winch, base plate and what we call the Holmatro Extendo Ram. So this is a special ram uh, that can be deployed quickly and it's got a special ratchet mechanism in it that creates the, uh, spans the distance of say a, 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 a between a dashboard and the uh, B pillar of a car very quickly. In the next pullout tray above we have a pair of bolt croppers, picket bars for use in the base plate below another socket set, casualty protection equipment, so that comprises of safety spectacles and uh, masks. Behind that is Dammit uh, quick 
sealant paste for use on a, a barrel say that may be leaking it's like a clay substance uh, that can be used to to seal it in a, in a drum for instance and the turf or handle in the next slide out tray above that we have a sledgehammer a prying bar and the two hoses for use with the airbags in the final pull out tray above that we have another two hoses for the airbag system behind and the control boxes for the high pressure and low pressure airbags so now moving on to the airbags that are carried on the vehicle we carry a range of high pressure which are the thinner black airbags and low pressure airbags which are stored in the orange valise so these two airbags here are rated at being able to lift 33 tons and these two bigger ones here are rated at being able to lift 68 tons we also carry uh, some matting here that's used to lay over the ground uh, to protect the airbags before the lift commences moving on down beneath the airbags we can start to see the range of tools uh, the, the crash rescue tools that are carried on this vehicle but first of all starting off to the left we have the the cable that's used with the turf or winch a wheel chock and two sill protectors which are used uh, to protect the sill of a vehicle when the dashboard roll for instance is being conducted So two spreaders are carried on this uh, side of the vehicle on these pull-out trays that what we uh, we fabricated to, to store them uh, conveniently for, for access. They're both capable of spreading 26 tonnes uh, and you'll see more of the, the complement of crash rescue equipment as we move around the vehicle. So now on to the offside middle locker and we start to see more of the, of the crash rescue equipment uh, that's used on uh, the rescue tape. So on the first pull-out tray we can see the two PowerShore hand pumps that are used to power the PowerShore system on the vehicle. This is a strut type of system that can be used for spanning a gap, say uh, a trench collapse, uh, to provide support across the two walls using a, a varied selection of adapters and um, heads to create a safe and stable working area. So now onto the pull-out tray above, we can see the two power shore struts. So these are the actual items that move in the system. The hand pumps connect into these and they're basically a cylinder that as uh, hydraulic oil is pumped in, they expand to bridge the gap. Two ratchet straps for use with the system, two base plates and two swivel heads. So on the next tray up, we have some more um, extensions and adapters for use on the PowerShore system. So we can see um, joining pieces, manually threaded extension pieces, as well as the spanner spanners to uh, make sure that the uh, extensions are properly locked together. Above that, a spinal board is also carried complete with the head restraint blocks. So moving on to the next pull out tray, we can see two rams, three ram extensions, another base plate, a swivel foot adapter, and a rim lifting adapter. This adapter fits in the rim of a wheel to create a lifting surface for if uh, say a person was trapped underneath a wheel or an axle of a vehicle it can be used uh, in conjunction with a ram or to, to lift the uh, axle or a wheel off of a casualty. In the next tray up we have cribbing and blocks and wedges and on the final pull out tra uh, tray of this locker We've got even more blocks and wedges. So and now on to the offside rear locker. As you can see, this is a smaller locker than, than the, the, the previous lockers. That's because it stores one of the uh, crash rescue pumps. So this is made by Holmatro. 
and it's called a duo pump because it has two outlets so that means that two tools can be run off of one pump it's a petrol driven um, engined uh, pump and they produce 720 bar of hydraulic pressure and these can operate all of the uh, crash rescue equipment on, on the vehicle. Above the uh, crash rescue pump is what we call the work platforms. So these uh, were built on a bespoke pull-out tray. Uh, this can be deployed from either side of the vehicle depending on uh, a safe area of work if the vehicle is in a fend-off position. Um, it carries two of these working platforms. Uh, these, when, when they're up, look like this. So that was the working platforms. You can actually adjust the legs on them to create a, uh, a higher working level for if, uh, say, on, on, a, on a tractor unit of, of a lorry, uh, the firefighters need to gain access to the windscreen. They can put it in front of the vehicle uh, to create a safe platform of work for them to be able to, uh, to, to release. So the, now at the back the of the rescue tender, uh, we have two barn doors to go into the, into the rear locker where the work platforms are stored as well as a deployable step at the back for easy access. Uh, we've also got hand uh, cleaner and hand sanitizer in the back here. So now well. moving on to the near side rear locker. This is just a copy of the offside rear locker. So as we can see, we've got another Holmatro Duo pump uh, in this locker, as well as the other side of the working platform. So as I said before, these can actually deployed off of this side, whatever situation the vehicle may be in. Now moving on to the near side middle locker. This locker contains, so in this pull out tray we have more blocks and wedges and more cribbing. Obviously the main role of this vehicle being the rescue tender is uh, road traffic collisions. So there is a lot of cribbing and blocks and wedges carried on this vehicle because of the because of the nature of the, of the vehicle it goes to the to the more serious road traffic collisions where where greater amount of equipment may be required. So the next pull out sliding tray above above the previous one contains the two stroke steel circular saw and spare st uh, two stroke fuel. And then above that we have the winching equipment box. Um, so the vehicle is fitted with a two ton direct line pull winch mounted at the front of the vehicle. And this is the uh, winching equipment that's uh, used to operate that. So we can see the control box there, some strops and a snatch block. So in the tray above that we carry four step blocks. These are used again for vehicle stabilisation and they're installed under the sills of the vehicle. Um, hence their stepped um, configuration to create a, a safe and stable platform for the firefighters to work in. So in this pull-out tray is where the rest of the rams are stored on the vehicle. So we have a variety of different lengths of rams. Um, so as you can see here, we have a, 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 a smaller, smaller ram for tighter access areas. This one here is a double acting ram. So on this one, only this end will extend, extend out. On this one, both ends extend out at the same time so again for maybe a bigger span uh, that's uh, needed to be to be spanned on the vehicle and also here we carry another two extensions for the ram so these these heads actually come off and these extension pieces can be inserted in this pull out tray we can see a pedal cutter so again this has its own hand pump and the blade part here that will actually cut through uh, the uh, a, a brake pedal or a clutch pedal, or throttle pedal, whatever pedal may be um, trapping the casualty. A cordless angle grinder and above that two reciprocating cordless saws. And then in this box here is the rip saw kit. So this carries spare blades uh, and, and the likes for, for all of the uh, reciprocating saws. So onto the last sliding pull-out tray on the vehicle, we can see the casualty protection shields. So we carry three of what we call the teardrop configuration, which are the, which are the blue ones here. And then another three heavy duty 
rubberized plastic ones below with uh, straps that can actually be um, strapped onto an area of the vehicle if need be. Also what we carry is two sharps kits. Uh, so these carry uh, all of the items that are needed to make a vehicle safe after the say roof has been cut off so it carries a um, a pillar protectors, B pillar protectors and C pillar protectors which are like socks that fit over the uh, for the stubs of, that have been left behind after the roof has been cut um, so it protects anyone still working around the vehicle from, from the sharp edges. So now on to the near side front locker of the appliance. This is where all of the uh, cutters are kept as well as the remaining spreaders and the uh, hoses so we'll show you a bit more of that now. So starting off on the right of the locker, we have Weber Stabfast Extra Long Stabilization Struts. So these can be used uh, to stabilize a vehicle that may have rolled onto its side or onto its roof. It's a ratchet type system that creates like a triangular effect uh, on, on, on the vehicle to, to create a, a stable uh, structure. At the back there we can see two of the piercing tools used in conjunction with the stab fast. So the first pull out shelf again was purpose built for this vehicle to create a uh, easy stowage of, of all the cutters and spreaders. So starting up the top we have a cutter this is called a new technology cutter hence the the smoothness of the blades rather than having teeth. This uh, cutter here has a cutting force of 103 tons Moving along, along, these two cutters are the same. So these have got teeth actually on, on, the, on the blades. Depends upon obviously the firefighter will use their experience to um, determine which cutter is best for, uh, for, the, for the situation that they need to, to, you know, to use it in. But these two uh, cutters here have uh, cutting forces of 48 tons. And then moving on down the bottom, we have another spreader. So just like we see around the other side, uh, the, the spreaders are carry, that are carried have varying spreading widths. Uh, again, the firefighter would use their experience to select which tool would be most appropriate for the, for the job. Uh, so this one has a, a spreading uh, force of 33 tonnes. So on the next pull-out tray, uh, starting at the top again, we have another new technology cutter. Uh, this one is able to cut, uh, well, it has a cutting force of 39 tonnes. And then moving along, we have a uh, cordless combi tool. It's a, a useful tool, obviously, if, if uh, the firefighters are working in a remote area away, if they, you know, for whatever reason they can't get one of the, the engine-driven pumps close to the incident. Uh, this can be carried, it has a, a shoulder strap. Uh, and can be uh, used in sort of remote locations. So this has a um, spreading force of 2.7 tonnes and a cutting force of 4.7 tonnes. To the right of that we can see a, a glass master saw. So it's got a, a coarse tooth blade on it that's used to cut through windscreens of, of cars or vehicles as well as a, a centre punch carried in it as well. So to the left, uh, down at the bottom, we can see the last of the pumps that are carried on the vehicle. This is called a whisper pump. It's only got one outlet, but uh, the engine idles when it's not being used. So on, a, on an incident ground, it's uh, generally preferred because it, it dies down to, a, to, an, to an idle speed when it's not being used. So obviously noise is reduced on, on the incident ground. As soon as you turn the, turn the trigger on, on any of the tools, it then speeds up and delivers the full pressure and flow. So with the three pumps that are carried on this rescue tender, we have the ability to power five tools all at the same time. We can see another seal clamp there. A roll of pack axe smash, which is like a, a film that can be applied over um, a windscreen to aid with the cutting or glass management and then further in we can see two salvage sheets and then on the bulkhead there a broom 
and two police accident signs. On the back of the uh, shelves is where we carry all of the hoses. So these are the hoses that provide the hydraulic oil between the pump and the tool. Uh, the different colours mean different uh, lengths so uh, or can be used for different tools uh, so that they don't get confused on, on, on the incident ground. These are what we call Holmatro core hoses. So there's one thick hose carries the high pressure oil down the middle of it in a separate hose that you can't see so that the 720 bar of the um that's used to power the tools is kept protected in a in a, a, a casing if you like of 25 bar oil which is the return feed uh, from the line it also means that the there's easy stowage they can be curled up easily um, which saves on space. We can also see the remote control here for the mass lighting system which we'll show you. Now. 